Hello, my name's Mike, I'm from Access Irrigation Limited. Today we're looking at pumps and primarily the fittings you're going to need to connect into the inlet and outlet for your system. I have a pump in front of me here, this is a Loara BG series, a very popular horizontal type pump. A single phase connects to a normal domestic 230 volt uh, electrical supply. Now with any pump there's a wet end which is this front section here and a dry end which contains the motor and the electrical connections and of course obviously there's sealing between the two so they don't mix together. To connect the pump you simply take off the electrical cover here, remove that and you'll find the electrical connections um, inside there. We're going to concentrate at the moment on the fittings that go for the inlet which is here and the outlet which is here. Okay, this is the inlet side of it. You'll find the inlet is lower, obviously, than the outlet, so that's a bit of a clue there. So today we're going to look at two different ways of providing an inlet. Uh, first of all will be from a water storage tank alongside the pump, so that's what's called a flooded head. And the second way is from an underground storage tank or a pond or a lake. Okay, so if we're coming from a water storage tank alongside, uh, the fittings will be like this. Now, uh, today I'm using uh, plastic fittings, uh, and you could easily use uh, galvanized fittings as well. There's an option there if you want to bore rigid or stronger fixings, if it's in a position or a place where you think that's going to be more vulnerable. So, obviously PTFE tape on those to seal them and that goes into there. Now they'll all be BSP type threads but they vary, some are one inch, some an inch and a quarter, some are an inch and a half. So we've got an adapter here so we've gone from inch and a quarter to inch which gives us our, our range of fittings now. Now with any type of pump you do need a check valve. The check valve is important to make sure that the chamber here, the wet chamber, stays full of water. So wherever this is positioned, and I'll show you a couple of uh, different alternative locations for it, uh, it just needs to be in the system somewhere. There's an arrow on it, and what that does is that actually allows water one way and then switches off and, and uh, doesn't allow it to fall back. So when the pump's operating, it allows water to flow through, and when the pump's off, that shuts and it, st it maintains that water within that wet chamber. So that goes on um, to our fixings here, making sure you've got the arrow in the right way. That screws on there. And then we always connect a pump with a flexible suction hose. Now don't use normal um, hose pipe. It must be this rigid type with a, a you know a coil inside it to maintain the rigidity. Remember this is suction side but it's also flexible as well which means that if you've got a PVC tank for example alongside the pump there's no rigid pipe work to disturb any fittings on the tank so that's why we use a flexible pipe. So again we'll put uh, a fitting into there and then for our suction hose we will take one of these type fittings. Uh, this is a brass type fitting which is very strong and robust and you need to seal that onto there. Now what I normally do is put a bit of duct tape around there just to give that extra seal. Whatever you do, don't use a normal Jubilee clip on this or a hose clip, use one of these super clamps which you'll see is more robust but it gives an even spread of tension all the way around so that goes on into there like so. That screws on there, and the beauty of that, oh, don't forget the seal inside. The beauty of that is that I can easily undo that. So I can bolt my pump down and then do this afterwards uh, where it's, you know, in, in relation to the tank itself. So that is the first option. So we've what's called a flooded, uh, inlet, a flooded head. So we've got a tank alongside it and our check valve here, most important. Okay, if you've got an underground tank that you're taking water from, or you've got a lake or a pond, for example, uh, then the inlet fittings are slightly different. Again, we fit, obviously fit a, uh, a unit into there to give us a, a common size, usually one inch. And again, we're gonna use the flexible uh, suction hose. So that goes on there like so. Uh, and then our flexible hose uh, goes on to 
there and then down to the various options that we've got. If we're coming from an underground tank we would usually use something like this. Um, again a check valve but this time it's got a strainer on it uh, and the beauty of that is that once the water starts flowing into our pump it can't drop back down then and start filling the tank up or going back to the tank. This pipe here um, from here up to the pump remains with water in so it remains flooded so that's that's most important and, and a key point to it if you've got a, a pond if you're taken from a pond what you don't want to be doing is having that lying on the, the bottom of the pond picking up all the debris and dirt otherwise it's not going to work very well so what we use in that case is what's called a floating inlet and this is basically the same as the check valve with the strainer on again but it's got a float on it and the beauty of this is it maintains the best quality of water for your pump because this just sits on the water uh, and obviously it keeps this just below the surface so it doesn't pick up any debris from the base of the lake or, or pond and it doesn't pick up any pollen or leaves from the top so that constantly moves up and down with the level of the water and it maintains that um, best quality water for your pump but it also maintains that that pipe here between there and the floating inlet is full of water all the time so your pump won't uh, go dry okay looking at the outlet fittings now obviously this is the higher out, uh, higher point of the pump um, there's we're going to look at two options here the first one we'll look at a normal traditional controller start uh, pump and then secondly we're going to look at a pressure system a constant pressure system where it's under pressure all the time so we're going to treat them slightly different although some things will uh, be the same on both so we've got a one inch outlet on this one so what we would do again I'm using plastic fittings here so if you've got uh, if you want to use galvanized fittings uh, pretty much exactly the same some of these have got seals on your notes so you won't need PTFE um, but the galvanized ones obviously you will so I've changed that then from a female to a male and then I've got this arrangement here I'll just pop that on and then I'll explain what that is okay so we're dealing first of all with the pump that's going to be a normal traditional so you're starting the pump via your controller and I've got here, I've got two gate valves. The first gate valve over here uh, leads on to a filter. Now it's always essential to have a filter in your system, um, usually near the pump or close to the pump. This protects any drippers you've got or sprinklers. Uh, make, sure, make sure that whatever you're sucking from, even from the mains water supply, it's nice and clean uh, and it'll go out to the system in a clean way. Gate valves are useful for servicing wise. If the pipe works higher, you don't water coming back if you want to ch uh, check that filter. The other side on this case, we've got a, what's called a, a tank return. And this goes back to the tank. So this is piped, in this case 16 mil, all the way back to the tank. And it just allows a trickle of water to go back to the tank. Now, why would you need that? Well, if you turn your pump on and a valve opens, that's no problem at all. But if you turn your pump on and a valve fails to open, for example, if it's full of debris or it, it's got an electrical fault, then what will happen, the pump will continue to run and just overheat uh, and it will damage the pump. If we have a pump return, it'll allow a, a trickle of water to go back into the tank constantly. So you'll have that change over of water and it'll keep the pump cool. So that, that's for a tra traditional way of doing it um, and very, very simple and easy to do and controlled via this little valve here. Another out pump outlet configuration is this one here. And this is simpler, no tank return, uh, especially useful for pressurized systems or temporary systems. Simply fit a geeker onto this end uh, and connect up to your hoses. All of these configurations are available off our website, uh, downloadable there. You'll find drawings and parts lists which make life easier for you. Um, if you've got a specific application in mind uh, that doesn't fit our normal uh, pump configurations, just give us a call or email us and we'll sort you out.